The Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ has put in my heart to speak regarding Billy Graham. Last September, um, I finally spoke regarding uh, Billy Graham. And uh, this video is not going to be... Uh, I did it in one of the street videos. I spoke regarding Billy Graham in one of the street minist uh, ministry videos that was recorded last September. This video is not for to um, belittle anyone or persecute anyone or condemn anyone. This video is for understanding. And uh, the Holy Spirit has once again uh, really pressed this on my heart. So I, I, he, he led me through a few scriptures and uh, for all those who have ears to hear. Beginning in Matthew 28. Beginning in Matthew 28. So, once again, this is not to condemn anyone. This is for a higher level of understanding of how God works in his people. Uh, Billy Graham was the, uh, the only preacher that I was ever able to listen to before I received the Holy Spirit. The reason why is he... I was, I've always been a realist, and before I was saved, my mind set was, uh, if you're a Christian, be a Christian. Uh, you know, it, that's the way it is. Uh, and I, I looked at, I viewed the church as, as uh, hypocrites. I viewed them as um, not real. They were fake, phony, fraudulent people chasing after money. That was my thoughts. And I was right. When I would, the odd time, I'd be surfing the channels and the Holy Spirit would bring me to a, a tent revival. I would see Billy Graham in his tent revival. And he was the only one I could ever listen to. And I believe that, and I know that Billy Graham, uh, he planted, through the Holy Spirit planted a seed or or planted watering, gave me growth and watering uh, through listening uh, to Billy Graham, uh, because Billy Graham was, without a doubt, was anointed, and I'm going to prove that, uh, of the Holy Spirit. So, uh, this video is not to condemn anyone, this video is for greater understanding of how God uses people. See, what God is doing is, God is fulfilling all scripture in all individuals, and he, he moved uh, in, in Billy Graham mightily. Beginning in Matthew 28, 16 to 20, uh, the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. So this is an association. Okay, I do not... Real, I, I've know too much regarding the history. Um, I, I, I've seen some videos of Billy Graham, and uh, I know that he was. There was a group of, of fellows that he was with, and God chose him out of that group. He was selected because God peers into the hearts. He's peering in your heart right now, and God peers into the hearts of humans, and that's how He found Abraham. And so He made a promise to Abraham. To all those who are like Abraham, uh, because they, because Abraham had faith through his works, and he wore his heart on his sleeve. Uh, that means that they they sh we we show our belief outwardly um, through preaching, through uh, godly living. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. So God checks all hearts. And Jesus came and spoke unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye, therefore, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, so behold, lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. So, in uh, 
So God gave a commandment in Acts, he said, to go out and to, to preach the gospel. It says it also here in other versions. In uh, uh, Here I have the RSD. It says here to go out and to preach the gospel and to teach people all things that I've commanded you. And that's exactly what Billy Graham did. So many, many people, uh, you know, getting a little off topic, they'll say that Billy Graham was a 33 degree Mason, and, and, and that's the, the biggest fraudulent false claim, one of the biggest ones against him, because a 33 degree Mason has sold his soul. The devil owns that soul. It's, it's, it's complete dark. It, it, 33 degree Mason cannot preach like that. It's not the works of a 33 degree Mason. Um, one who has their spirit as 33 degree masons they, they, they cannot do those things God doesn't use them for those things they, they're, they're not his they're not his true preachers or true ministers as busy Billy Graham was so here it says uh, in, uh, in the RSV teaching them it says there, there is a, another version here that says that they are um to, he, they're, they're to preach the gospel of Christ uh, to the ends of the earth. So here in John, beginning in John 3, 7 to 8. Find it here. In John 3, 7 to 8. The Lord said, Marvel not that I say unto thee, ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, where it wills. And you hear the sound of it. And that's a human being speaking. But you cannot tell where it comes from, nor whether it goes. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. You see, uh, there's one verse that I forgot to mention, that I forgot to, to uh, write here. And uh, what this verse is saying is that God, what God did with Billy Graham is he gave him favor before all men. That's one of the scriptures in the Bible that uh, God fulfilled with Billy Graham. He gave, he, Billy Graham, he used Billy Graham as the wind to get favor of, of all men. Okay? And that favor is to preach the gospel and that favor is to, um, is to be a ministering wind of, of Jesus Christ. And that's exactly what God did with Billy Graham. God gave him favor before all men. And, and this is really all nations. And uh, obviously, because he was wearing his heart on his sleeve. That's, God used him for that. He anointed him to do that. And the church is jealous bottom line. Now again, I'm not here to condemn anyone. I'm not here to condemn the church. Uh, however, there is a, um, in many, not all, but in many of those persecutors that are persecuting him are jealous. They're, they're just stra straight out jealous. And um, I, underst I can understand the curse that is happening. However, um, it, it, it it's a complete um, lack of understanding. And it, it is um, an exaltation for themselves. I guess it makes them feel better when they persecute. And that's the reason why, once again, I'm going to mention this again, that's the reason why the church is in such a bad condition. The church is in such a bad condition because it, they're, they're persecuting each other. And there's also the false ministers they're the, really the antagonists, probably, that, that really started this. The pastors, the, the upper ones, uh, they, they attack uh, and it's because they're jealous. And, bec and also because they want to dethrone, you know, they're after the heavyweight champ type of thing. And that's what's happening, and it's, it's spewed down into the church. And because of the curse, the lack of understanding, because of the religious um, indoctrination of, of the left horn of Lucifer... They, uh, they do not understand the deeper ways that God ministers to the Gentiles uh, because they themselves are just not at that level. You see, the silver does not recognize the gold. Now, 
um, in the next verse. So there is now one of the things, and I saw the interview, uh, Billy Graham was speaking with the Crystal Cathedral and uh, Robert Schuller and said there is a wideness to God. And that was an eruption. That was like Mount St. Helens erupting. Now, what, what this means, when Billy Graham said, yes, there is a diversity of God, there is a wideness of God, Okay, what he is saying is that there are um, diversities in the way that God saves, if you can understand this. God is saving all people in their religion. He's bringing salvation in those religions. You see, and that's how God is doing salvation. Not everyone is a first fruit. And, and perhaps he didn't even know that at the time. You see, because in the time of Billy Graham, the, the Bible was not... He was at the cutting edge of understanding. God gave him the cutting edge for the times, for the generations. But the Bible was not decoded at that time. Not, it, the, the, the spirit of understanding was not fully given to men. And... Uh, so, but, so, he, so even though he didn't understand 100% completely, as we, as we do today, and that's because of the times we're living in, not because of the uh, natural selection, not because a man is better than another man, it's because as the times get closer to the second coming, the knowledge and information increases. Always been that way. And, and so what he is saying is exactly that. There's a wideness to how God saves humanity. He saves them in their own religion while they're not, they don't even know God. That's how he works salvation. He's looking in your heart right now, and when he has a favorable response, like a preacher, for example, a, pre, a street preacher is, 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 is the, in the bosom of, of Jesus Christ. That is where he's there the most, when, when we walk on water. You see, and that's where he's there the most. So, um, so the um, the preacher is upheld of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit speaks through the preacher. Okay, and once again, the verse is fulfilled where it says that God gave him favor before all men, because God is working salvation in all the nations. You see. And from there, the gospel gets, gets spread out spiritually. Also. The church is, now, once again, I'm not condemning anyone. This is what the Holy Spirit, this is what I wrote. This is how I, what the Holy Spirit had me write. The church is the prostitute. Not, not Billy Graham, the church is the prostitute. Because the church, in, in parts, not everyone, is, um, is seeking the uh, approval of men without the Holy Spirit. The church is doing the same thing. The church is doing the exact same thing in Egypt. They're seeking the approval of men. But they're doing it without the Holy Spirit. That's the difference. Billy Graham was, was, was doing it with the Holy Spirit. And so once again, the, the verse comes also that says we have to examine ourselves. We have to take the plank out of our own eye, the beam out of our own eye, before we attempt to take the plank out of someone else's eye. Your rewards, I have written here, your rewards are based on how you see so this is part rewards. We're, we're speaking regarding part eternal rewards on how we view the ministry of others. And Billy Graham, from my understanding, was the greatest evangelist of all time regarding numbers. Because he was led of God. There's no doubt about it. And I, fe I felt the Holy Spirit when I was doing this and when I was listening and I felt the Holy Spirit all over me. And I felt this way regarding Billy Graham the first time I saw him on television once again because uh, 
he wore as 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 I would say also uh, you know he he wore he was a real thing. He wore his heart on his sleeve. Okay, the ecumenical pastors in those times did not speak like he did. Um, and and then and it never will. Okay, uh, he was a different breed because he was called out of the Holy Spirit. Uh, in John, so this is John three seven in Luke. Here it is, Luke eleven thirty four. The light of the body. So this is the rewards. The light of the body is, is the eye. Therefore, when your eye is single, thy whole body also is full of light. But when thine eye is evil, thy body is also full of darkness. Take heed, therefore, that the light which is in thee be not darkness. If thy whole body, therefore, is full of light, having no part dark, the whole shall be full of light, as when the bright shining of a candle forth, uh, shining of a candle doth give thee light. So, the self... Uh, exultant is what the Holy Spirit had me right here. Jealous church, self-exultant and jealousy. This is what this is the big, big factor of why Billy Graham is being persecuted by the church. The church is led of the Holy. Um, so the self-exultant, jealous church is persecuting the true church of God, the Holy Spirit, the true church led of the Holy Spirit, because they cannot see. The um, the uh, the hand of God in the life of others, and 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 they persecute those things that they understand not. So once again, this is part of losing rewards. Oh, and it was supposed to be Second Peter, but I, this was supposed to be Second Peter two twelve. So I go to Second Peter two twelve reading out of the RSV Bible. In 2 Peter 2.12 says, but, but these, like irrational animals, creatures of instinct, born to be caught and killed, reviling in matters of which they are ignorant, will be destroyed in the same destruction with them. Now, suffering wrong for their wrongdoing, they count it pleasure to revel in the daytime. Their blots and blemishes, reveling in their dissipation, carousing with you. These are the ones that that um, they they're the the ones that they're, they're the wolves in the sheep's clothes, clothing. They're the ones that start these things. I was in a, a mosque. I was ministering in the mosque a couple years ago. This was a couple years back, and I spoke with. I was speaking with one of the elders in the mosque, and he seemed to be a very nice guy, nice, low-key, good temperament, quiet, and we started talking, and um, the Holy Spirit was speaking to him, and all of a sudden, he, he, he burst forth, uh, his dam broke, and um, he started blaspheming Billy Graham, calling him a fraud, and he's the biggest fraud, and he's this, and he's this, and he's that. Well, the enemy wants to discredit the works of God, you see. And so the Holy Spirit had me talk, respond and say, I, I don't see him uh, being investigated. I don't see any charges laid against him for fraud, for tax evasion, he was saying, and all of this stuff. So... Um, and it kind of silenced them. So I don't, I don't see these things. All I hear is what people are saying. That's all I hear. But I don't see any evidence. I don't see any proof whatsoever. And uh, there was another situation where uh, I guess he was given a reward. And from a, uh, a person who apparently is apostatized from the faith and he... Uh, came up with his own organization, Antichrist organization, and gave him an, an, an award. And Billy Graham, I think he said something like, it's an honor to receive an award from this corporation or from this entity. And people are saying, well, he's, he's a fraud. Like, Billy Graham, is, he's, he's uh, an atheist, and he's this, and he's that. When, in fact, once again, God is using that scripture that says that to have favor 
with all men, and also what God is saying, okay, what Billy Graham is, is saying to Billy Graham, is he was, he was saying that, let, let, let's, let's look at it this way, um, he received an award from a, from, from a, uh, an organization that is Antichrist, that is warring against God, from a wolf. God says, well, it's an honor to receive this. You know, what, what, it, what, that, what that means, receiving a reward from there, is, uh, is, is an exaltation for the ministry for the, to the whole world. It's an exaltation for the ministry to the whole world. You see, it gets the world attention. And that's what he was. God put him up as a popular, the most popular evangelical in the entire world. So people say, well, a lot of people lost their faith because of Billy Graham. No, it's not because of Billy Graham. Um, God's hand was on him. God was with him. You see? So, so God makes a way where... Uh, people do not, and I'm not saying that Billy Graham was 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 perfect. You know, like we all make mistakes. Everyone makes mistakes. However, if you look at the positive side, because God uses everything for good, God will minister for good. God will cause division. God will cause separation. God will cause all these things to happen. But He can use it and turn it around for a blessing in the lives of people. And not everybody is going to believe, however, God can make an escape in, uh, in a way that when we're ministering, that we're blameless regarding the souls of others because of the life that we live. So, uh, this is the, the, the stumbling block that people are having that, that because of lack of discernment, lack of understanding of what God is doing. I mean, look at Samson, for example. You know, Samson was raised up. God says, I raised him up in order to find uh, a conflict against the Philistines. That's why I raised Samson up. Samson was raised up to, to actually cause a conflict. Things were stagnant. God wanted to move. So God is bringing separation from the sheep and the goats. And uh, a few things regarding the death of Billy Graham. It's got nothing, it, 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 as far as this rapture, the pre-tribulation rapture goes, that's a farce. That's another false doctrine from the false church. Um, the Holy Spirit, uh, there's a couple things. First of all, it's the separation of the sheep and the goats. The fullness of the separation of the sheep and the goats. Uh, it, it is also the uh, weariness of the church coming to an end. The church is tired. The church is worn out. The church is given up. Given out. It's old. It's ready to be spewed out. So that's what that that's what that that is. Now in, in, in Luke eighteen, I have another verse here. Oh yeah, it says, And a ruler asked him, Good teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, uh, I took my eye off the page here. I was looking to make sure I was at the right verse. Why do you, and, and to inherit the eternal life, what do I do? And Jesus said to him, why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. So he's saying, you don't know who I am. Why are you calling me good? You're just calling everybody good. But you have no idea what good is. So he's speaking regarding the first covenant also. And Jesus said to him, why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. So he doesn't know who, who he is. You know the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not kill, spiritually or physical. Do not steal away from God. Do not bear false witness. Honor your father and mother. And he said, all these things I have I observed from my youth. And observe your mother and father. That is physical and spiritual. And he said, so these are the fruits. And he said, all these I have observed from my youth. And when Jesus heard it, he said to him, One thing you still lack. Sell all that you have and distribute to the poor 
and you will have treasure in heaven. And come and follow me. But when he heard this, he became sad. Now, this is the last three and a half years. And, uh, and this is at the first covenant. Now, he said, But when he heard this, he became sad, for he was very rich. Jesus, looking at him, said, How hard it is for those who have riches to enter the kingdom of God. For it is easier for um, a, uh, a thick rope to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. And those who heard it said, Then who can be saved? But he said, what is impossible with man is possible with God. So what this verse is saying is that the rich in the first covenant, it was based on self-righteousness. It was natural selection. So there was a tremendous exaltation in the hearts of those who were rich. They were set above. They were looked at as lords. They had the riches. But you see, here in the spiritual covenant, and God even says here, even in that time, what is impossible for men is impossible with God. So the church looks at this and says, well, this person has a lot of money. He has a lot of money. He, he, he can't enter the kingdom of God. And, and that's not true uh, in every single case, especially in the spiritual covenant. How hard it is. Now, those who have riches are responsible. We're all responsible what we do with our riches. And, of course, people have riches for specific reasons. And, of course, part of the reason is to distribute. Now, my understanding from what I just saw in, the, in one of the videos is that um, Billy Graham, th this is what I saw. Um, he did distribute a lot of what he had. So, and he doesn't have the amount of riches uh, as the uh, um, as is being reported through other resources um, uh, in for other we website there was a website that reported that he had such and such amount of dollars when in fact he doesn't have that um, so so there's another um, clue left that God has left that, that he had him do to distribute that wealth that he had for the people to to understand, to see uh, the fruits, the physical fruits. And of course, we're in a spiritual covenant now. You see, so it is very it is very possible for a person that has a lot of money to enter the kingdom of God. Uh, however, uh, money has to be handled according to the will of God. And, and, and that means also to distribute. So, um, to, to the right places. And God leads people in doing that and moving their hearts. Unfortunately, not everybody under, not everybody responds. So, and uh, there is no one perfect except Jesus Christ. So once again, everyone makes mistakes. We all have had our times when we fail to listen. To the, uh, or not listen, but obey the Holy Spirit when He's moved our hearts. I think we're all guilty of that. Uh, While well, we are all guilty of that. So, uh, however, um, when uh, these things are finally um, uh, sown in our lives, uh, then uh, you know we do we do work a, a perfection as we go from glory to glory. So the times are, are on us now. And uh, I, I do believe that, w without a doubt, uh, that Billy Graham was the real thing. There's, no, there's absolutely no doubt about it. And uh, so the, the, the challenge, I think possibly uh, uh, one of the greatest challenge that, challenges that we face is to be able to uh, recognize the true anointing, the true ministry, what God is doing. And unless we're there, unless we're working our perfection, we're, we're getting more perfect and more perfect and more perfect and more perfect. Uh, 
we're not going to be able to uh, understand, we're not going to be able to perceive a higher level of perfection that is in others. And of course, what the Holy Spirit is doing in others. So I hope you're edified. God bless you. Amen and amen.